<laughs> hey y'all, this is Morgan from thinkatheist.com. Today I'm going to quickly go over a quick little snippet of the Bible. Primitive nonsense. Occasionally, <laughs> the Mormons or Jesus worshippers will knock on my door and offer their Mormon Bible, the Watchtower, or whatever. I wanted something brief to trade with them, so I put together the following two pager. The Bible as primitive nonsense. Christianity is based on the stories and claims of the Bible. If the Bible is not largely accurate history, then Christianity has no foundation. Thus, either the Bible is dependable historical truth, or Christianity is just superstitious mumbo-fucking-jumbo. How could we prove the authors of the Bible were superstitious myth-believers and not skeptical, genuine wise men? We could begin by considering some of the creatures they wrote about in the Bible, such as witches, wizards, sorcerers, spirits, ghosts, giants, dragons, sea monsters, and unicorns. Modern science can't come up with the slightest trace of evidence that any of these creatures existed or have ever existed. This stuff was just made up. If someone we don't know says, just fucking trust me, shouldn't we be suspicious other mythical oddities of the Bible include a talking fucking snake, a talking fucking jackass, a talking fucking bush, a 900-year-old man, a man whose superhuman strength resided in his hair, three men who walked unharmed through fire, a man who lived three days in the belly of a whale, a wandering star, which somehow led to a particular building, and... A corpse which stood up and walked after three days in a tomb. Yeah. Weren't these stories just meant as metaphors? If so, wouldn't the Bible authors have made this clear? After all, whenever Jesus spoke in brabbles, he announced it first. Clearly, all this stuff was just made up. No half-educated adult living today. Who was not intoxicated in this stuff since childhood, could take it seriously, or would consider even for a moment that this stuff is really history. Christians obviously use a double standard when it comes to judging the Bible as history. Jesus made up a whole bunch of stuff too. He claimed a true believer could command a mountain to move, and it would move. That's in Matthew 17, 20. He can't. Jesus claimed that whenever one asks of him his name, he will do it. And that's John 14, 13. He doesn't. He also said he would return with the kingdom of heaven before all of his generation was dead. That's Mark 9, 1. He didn't. That was 2,000 years ago. Are you one of those who are still waiting? Yeah. The Bible instructs us to believe without questioning. But how can this be sensible advice if the Muslims and the Hindus say exactly the same thing about their holy books? So, why is this stuff in the scriptures since it can be used to prove Jesus was making stuff up. Because Jesus and the authors believe the end of the world was coming very soon. A message he repeated over and over. Well, the world didn't end, and this embarrassing misinformation is still in the Bible. But many Christians don't actually read the Bible, and the others simply choose to ignore it. Often, they will say something like, It's in the Bible, so I believe it. This simply is another way of saying, You're right, this makes no sense at all, but I believe it anyway. I'm just not going to think about it. But, at least the Bible proves some moral guidance, right? Wrong! Not once does God, or Jesus, or Anyone in the Bible say a word against the practice of slavery? Some of the other moral wisdom of the Bible includes, and you can all look this up, kill disobedient sons, Deuteronomy, kill those who work on the Sabbath, Exodus 35, 
kill blasphemers, Leviticus. Kill non-virginal brides, Deuteronomy. Kill homosexuals, Leviticus. Kill adulterers, Leviticus. Kill witches, Exodus. Where it clearly implies that they do exist and they should be sought out. This statement, in fact, led to the torture and execution of thousands, maybe millions, by the Christian leaders of the Middle Ages. Doesn't it seem like an awful lot of killing was prescribed? Do you really think this is the best a wise, all-knowing, loving God could come up with? If the Bible is the word of God, why does it strike us as so morally repugnant? All this stuff is primitive, brutal nonsense, and clearly was just made up. If these commands constitute moral wisdom revealed by God, then shouldn't our laws be based on them? Shouldn't we be searching out witches and killing blasphemers, adulterers, and homosexuals? Note. Also, that none of this wisdom of the Bible was ever overruled or suspended by Jesus or anyone else who could ever be. Quote, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God will stand forever. And that's Isaiah 48. Look it up. If the Bible is truly the word of God, why is there no definite Ambiguous evidence of the fact of the Bible. Why are there no scientific facts in the Bible which would have proved it was revelation from God? There is nothing that was not gener generally known by literate men of that age. And there is a great deal of misinformation. Jesus thought disease was caused by evil spirits. That's Matthew 8.16. Why wouldn't God have put it into a few startling facts that no normal man of the time could have known like the earth goes around the sun, microorganisms cause the disease, nothing can travel faster than the speed of light, etc. In the face of such ambiguity, each religion has come up with its own holy books and each depends on miracles like virgin births, and faith of healings and what have you. Why doesn't God or Jesus provide ambiguous proof to each generation of all over the world? After all, man's argument over religion has caused the deaths of millions over the ages. So how could a God who loves mankind just stand aside and allow this to happen? If the people of Jesus' generation needed miracles to believe, why should we, living 2,000 years later, to be expected to believe with nothing but ancient, untestable claims that the word of others go on? Yes, the Bible instructs us to believe without questioning. But how can this be sensible advice if the Muslims and Hindus say exactly the same thing about their holy books? If someone we don't know says, just trust me, shouldn't we be suspicious? As Sam Harris has written, Christianity amounts to the claim that we must love and be loved by a God who approves the scapegoating, torture, and mortar of one man. His son, incidentally, in compensation for the misbehavior and thought crimes of all others. But of course, this is nonsense. Dep this nonsense depends entirely on the testimony of highly superstitious, primitive authors of the Bible. Doesn't it matter to you whether the Bible is true? Don't you care?